What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on overcoming retroactive jealousy. My name is Matt and in today's video we're going to be talking about delaying your retroactive jealousy compulsions. And we kind of touched a little bit before um, on a previous video about it but I want to kind of dive in a little bit deeper because uh, I got a lot of questions about this. A lot of people wanting a little further explanation on this because I think uh, people are realizing that this actually works. Um, so the idea is when we have a retroactive jealousy thought, an intrusive thought, it uh, could be uh, about uh, your significant other having sex with a previous partner, a one night stand, uh, anything for that matter, anything that triggers our retroactive jealousy uh, allows us to, to flare up inside, to feel disgusted, whatever the case is, angry it might be, we have a knack to do a compulsion. So try to get back to feeling good as quickly as possible. And so our brain kind of goes in this automatic mode and we do a compulsion. So we maybe explore the thought further. We dive into the thought and get lost and tangled up into the thought, trying to find a rational answer, a rational explanation, although that never works, but that's our brain's first thing that it tries to do no matter what. Another compulsion, sometimes people will go and ask their significant other questions. Like, hey, um, this person, what did you do with them? Did you do this? Did you do that? You know, how, how long were you guys uh, in bed for? How many nights did you did, did, did see each other? How many, one night stand? Whatever it is, but you might go and question them. Try to find relief, trying to make yourself feel better in the process. And, and compulsions range for, for a lot of people depending on what it is. Some people just turn to like alcohol, drugs, things like that to try to mask the pain. Sometimes you'll see people go on social media and look at photos. Uh, sometimes you'll see people try to hack into the other person's phone to read the text messages. This is all compulsions, all trying to make yourself feel better. But it doesn't work like that. So a compulsion with retroactive jealousy, much like it is with, with regular OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, when you compulse, you get like a little bit of relief in the short term. So you might feel a little bit better when you immediately do that compulsion. You might feel a little sense of relief so you think it's working. However, in the long run, you're making things much worse, 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 worse for you because you're not facing the problem head on. You're masking the pain. You're, you're masking it over and over and over and over again. And that's why your retroactive jealousy will not go away because you are doing these compulsions and not facing the problem. You're masking the pain. You're masking the pain. You're masking the pain. And I get retroactive jealousy seems so real that you feel like you need to have the answers or else you won't get over it. I need to know. I need to know this. I need to know that. You got to be at peace with everything. But that's just your brain playing tricks on you, I promise you that. When you overcome retroactive jealousy, you'll realize you didn't even need the answer to those questions and those answers don't really mean anything. Like questions that I would just dread over um, and wanna ask and need to know because I had to know all this stuff. I, don't, I can't even remember what they are now. You know, so that it, you, you get to a point where your brain kind of unlocks you're not doing your compulsions, you've overcome retroactive jealousy, and you realize you see the important things in life, and you realize that these details and things actually are not important at all. And you'll get there. So the main key, the main uh, place to get there, how to get there, is to not give in to the compulsions. Again, you think you're, you're doing yourself a benefit by exploring the thought, by trying to find answers, but it's doing the opposite effect. It's giving attention to the retroactive jealousy, it's making it stronger. So your key is to not do the compulsion. Just let the thought enter into your mind, whatever. Let the anxiety, let the uh, pain, I guess you could call it, take over your body, but don't do anything about it. And then another thought will come in and you'll just let the pain take over and not do anything about it. And you might have like anxiety attacks, things like that, but again, you don't do anything about it because it's just a feeling. It cannot kill you, it cannot harm you, it's just a feeling. Your brain's gonna tell you otherwise, but that's not the truth. Your brain's, again, in locked mode right now and we're trying to unlock it. So for some people, it's very hard not to give into a compulsion. I completely understand that. 
Um, it was hard for me starting out too because it's natural for us to want to do that when we're not feeling good when we're you know hungry we immediately go eat something to make ourselves feel better right we need to go to the bathroom we immediately use the bathroom to make ourselves feel better right so again i get it so that's why we get to this this idea of delaying our compulsions and i read a lot of books on overcoming ocd because retroactive jealousy is a form of OCD. And if you follow steps to overcome OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, you will overcome retroactive jealousy. So to always kind of keep myself updated and, and understanding everything that's going on and keep me refreshed, I always read uh, some different books on the subject. And, and one thing popped up in a book uh, that I was reading just this morning. And so that's why I want to do a video a little more specific to answer these questions. And it was this person suffering from obsessive compulsive disorder and it was plugging in their coffee maker and they would plug in a coffee maker and they would make coffee but then when they were done they would immediately unplug the coffee maker and then they'd go and they would drink their coffee and then they'd get a thought that entered their mind to say like did I unplug the coffee maker or not because if I didn't unplug it it could turn back on and it could start a fire so let me go check and so they would do the compulsion and they, they would go and they would check and it would still unplugged. So they'd go back and they'd be good for, you know, whatever, 30 minutes. And then the thought would come in, wait, I, I, don't, I don't want the house to burn down. So let me go check again. And then anytime they'd leave the house, they would worry that maybe they left the coffee maker plugged in. And so it's that obsessive thought and then doing the compulsion to try to find relief. But the compulsion just makes things worse. So it's like an RJ thought. The bad thought enters your mind. You have to do a compulsion and explore it and explore it and explore it and explore it and explore it. And then the next time it comes in, you got to do it again and again and again. It's just like checking on the, the coffee pot, just like checking on the coffee maker. It's the same thing. So what this specialist basically did was uh, allowed her to still do her compulsion. So allowed her to still go and check to see if the coffee maker was unplugged, but made her wait a certain amount of time so instead of immediately going and checking did i unplug it she first started out and she'd have to wait at least 15 minutes so the thought would come in that oh did i unplug the coffee maker i gotta go check i don't want there to be a fire but she knew she couldn't check yet she had to wait 15 minutes and then after that 15 minutes had passed okay now i can go check and she would go and look and check and after she did that for a little bit, the doctor said, okay, we're gonna expand it by an hour. And so again, every time the thought of the coffee pot being still plugged in came up, even though she wanted to go check really bad, she knew, okay, I can't check now, but I can check in an hour. If I left it plugged in, the house is not gonna burn down in an hour anyway, it's gonna be okay. So let me check in an hour. And so that would, she, she would go check in an hour. And obviously this then started extending out more and more and more, and pretty soon it turned into you know, go out of your house for three, four hours and come back and, and check and then two, three days and so on and so forth. And then pretty soon the OCD was no longer there. She no longer had this fear of the, the coffee pot still being plugged in because her brain realized, oh, okay, I see. It's really not a fear. There's nothing to fear. Nothing's actually happening here. And so that's the same thing applies with retroactive jealousy. We're basically, we need to t t teach our brain that, hey, there is no fear in thinking these thoughts. There is no danger here. We're not going to die. It's okay. We don't have to do this compulsion. It's really okay. And when we do that over and over and over again, our brain finally goes, oh, okay. I see. You were right the whole time, right? So that's the idea with delaying our compulsion so again find out what your compulsion is i know mine was constantly just exploring the thought i ask questions a lot but i i learned to to kind of stop doing that but i would still explore the thought and try to find answers within the thought uh and it doesn't even make sense because it, it doesn't work like that and so instead you know let the thought come in you feel it you feel like you want to do the compulsion you feel like you want to explore the thought but tell yourself, okay, I'll explore this thought, but I'm gonna explore it in 15 minutes. And if the 15 minutes passes, and if you still wanna explore the thought, then by all means, you can do that. But if the 15 minute passes and you, you don't need to explore it, or you might even not even uh, remember what triggered you in the first place, 
that can happen too. So do that for a little bit and then extend it out by 30 minutes and then a, an hour and just keep doing that. But you know, the thing you gotta remember is it's not gonna feel good at first because your body's gonna wanna do a compulsion. Your brain is sending signals telling you that you need to do something but you're not gonna do it. And that's the key. But understand you can do it just not in that certain time frame and see if you can extend it out to like hours per day like okay three hours and then i can explore the thought four hours then i can explore the thought i can't do any compulsion or thought exploration today but tomorrow i can and the more you can split this up and the more you can delay that compulsion and not react immediately you're going to get over retroactive jealousy so fast so quick your brain is going to finally get out of that lock mode and you're going to start seeing things for what they truly are and seeing these thoughts for what they truly are and just thoughts that can come and go can come and go that you will have no more attachment to so that's kind of the video of the day to to, to kind of get your mindset on that so if you if you don't really know your what your compulsions are write them down next time a retrograde thought comes up and takes over uh, which might be right now happening, you know, whatever the case is, write down like what it is that you really want to do to, to mask the pain. Is it alcohol? Is it asking questions? Is it exploring the thought? Write down what it is and then practice not doing it right away, right? Practice splitting up that time frame between the thought coming in and you wanting to do the compulsion. And the more you do this, you're going to widen that gap more and more and more. And pretty soon, you're not going to have the need to do any compulsion and you're going to be able to think a retroactive jealousy thought that really bothers you right now and it's not going to bother you anymore. It's going to come up and it's just going to go in one side of your head and out the other like clouds in the sky just passing by. It really, it's going to be like that. I understand if you don't believe me now, but I promise you that's exactly how it's going to be. So. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Uh, again, if you want more content, please subscribe. And we also have the Facebook group. Uh, I'll leave the link in the description below. And if you want more one-on-one -on -one time um, and step-by-step -step methods, things like that for getting over retroactive jealousy, I do have my course. And the link is in the description below as well. Other than that, you guys take care. And we'll see you in the next